everybody, it's Stephen and Walter here, and we are in Sydney, Australia. We made it. Uh, this is going to be a short video. If you've already seen, I put some uh, shorts up on YouTube about uh, the Opera House and about Sydney Bridge and where we were this afternoon. We're both very, very zonked. I think I'm more zonked than Walter is, which is kind of unbelievable because usually I'm not, but... I don't know that this flight just seemed like it was endless. So let's talk about the flight because it was 22 hours. It was five hours from Toronto to Vancouver. And then we had about a two hour layover and got right back on the same plane and we had the same seating. But you know what I told you, I think before we left that uh, we uh, booked or Walter booked this, the seats that were premium economy. And I'm glad that he did. Um, because those seats had tons of leg room. The only thing that was a disadvantage was, how do they expect you to have everything in a neat pile, like my iPad? I wanted my iPad out. They, well, the problem with the seats that I booked was they were, um, uh, what do you call them, um, bulkhead seats. So there wasn't any seats in ahead of us, but they didn't have anywhere for you to store items. No, like uh, they had stuff for your, you know, your. Uh, Keep talking. You're gonna shut the door. We're doing laundry already. Uh, they had stuff for you to, um, uh, for you know the safety records and stuff, but they weren't in an expandable, um, uh, an expandable pocket. They had this solid steel thing in front of the pocket, so all it could hold was the, uh, the ma a magazine and uh, and. Uh, leaflet to show you where the exits were and you couldn't put anything else in there you know it makes you kind of wonder after everything you've heard about like uh doors blowing out of planes and people jumping out and all this kind of stuff about the actual engineering behind a, uh, an aircraft you know you've got all these people up there in this metal tube flying at over thirty thousand feet i think we were flying at 1.28 thousand yeah feet uh, you know, up there, uh, yeah, you want to be concerned about everything being, you know, well-engineered, well-designed. Nope, nope, but and, anyways. Yeah, and the other things that we had problem with, I mean, like, we've got a pillow and a blanket and a bunch of other stuff, and, like, there was no place to put them. Yeah, when we got onto the flight that was going from Vancouver uh, to here, to Sydney, and it's a longer journey, it's 15 hours yeah from uh, vancouver to sydney yeah so you know you're flying at night kind of a thing um the endless night it seemed uh and they so they put out this little little lovely little package that has some amenities in it like a toothbrush and a little toothpaste and some socks you know if your feet get cold i'm already wearing socks but whatever and a little blankie as well believe me the blankie was a uh, good thing to have because why do they keep an airplane cabin ice cold yeah like really if you got ice in your drink you didn't have to worry about it melting ever on there and it seemed like it was blowing right down on me now i know i could have reached up and maybe readjusted the jets and the air conditioning was not on like on my seat but whatever and i don't usually get cold on an airplane but i was so i used the blankie i don't think i've ever used a blanket that they've given us on yeah i was surprised that you were using it yeah because i get cold easy. well you were just cuddling and right i was up just cuddling little, over it. Yeah, little, little baby in his cocoon swaddling clothes in the whole bed everybody came by oh what a cute little baby oh he's maturing very fast he has hair under his nose yes he does um, but anyways, yeah, I know we're sounding like we're nitpicky, but it actually the flights are on time. Yeah, and the service, uh, was, the service fine. was fine. The service and, was good. Um, food was all food right. Food was not the worst I've ever had on an airplane. But if they hadn't told me what a couple of the dishes were, I wouldn't have known. Like their chicken parm didn't look like any chicken parm I'd ever had in my life. But uh, they certainly did keep us fed, though. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. Like, but, I mean, some of the stuff wasn't that great. They got, gave us a chicken sandwich halfway through the mm. flight. I ate it, but it wasn't, there wasn't it, really any flavor to it. No, it was very, pardon the pun, bland. 
uh, with that. But I mean, I don't expect much from airplane food anyways. So, you know, now they did serve it to us on China. And, oh, their wine, though, was horrible. Um, again, I wasn't expecting it to be, and I'm not a fine connoisseur of wine. As you well know, I drink it from a box. So, but this stuff was even worse than the box wine. Well, I chose the red, and um, they had a Merlot, and then they had some Zweigalt or something from Germany. Yeah. And said, I'll, I'll have the Merlot, and the guy says, good choice. <laughs> I don't think he knew. He, no, no, he said, he said, the one that oh, was there, oh, he was being good choice. He says, I wouldn't drink the other one either. <laughs> That's what he said. And the, the lady, that was on one of the, that was the trip that was the guy that served the wine on the, on the part of the journey from Vancouver to um, here. Uh, but it was one of the female uh, flight attendants who served the wine for the first meal we had from Toronto to And it was Vancouver. actually the same wine. And it was the same wines. And we asked her, well, and I, I said, well, I'd have white. What is it? She couldn't even re read the name on it. She says, I think this one might be Spanish. And I didn't, I just and she said, obviously had no idea. She had no idea about the wine. Wine, she obviously doesn't drink wine, so. No. So I said, yeah, that one. And yeah, I could drink it, but it was sweet. And I don't like a sweet wine. But anyways, these are nitpicky, okay? Did it wreck our time? No, it did not. So we're just stating what was there. We didn't have any crazy passengers disrupting things. No one tried to get out of the plane or anything like that, um, which was good. And when we switched over to go on to the longer part of the journey, we were sitting in a in the section of the plane that had about 21 seats. I think I got That's 24 it. seats. Was it 24 seats? And uh, we had the app and there was over half of those seats had not been purchased. Yeah, so like all the seats on the window side, the, they had two seats together on the window side, um, on either side, they were filled. But the seats in the middle, uh, the four seats in the middle that didn't have windows, um, the first two or three rows of it were totally empty. Yeah. And uh, what was weird about that was about a month or two ago, I checked the seating to see how many of them had been filled. And that section was completely full. So either mm. somebody canceled or didn't show up for it. A big group. A big group or something like that. Or whatever. So anyways, actually that made it kind of nice because... It just felt it just felt more private, even though it's really not. And all the plebes were in the back of the the, the economy uh, people, poor people. Um, but anyways, but yeah, the seats are a little bit bigger, and there's more leg room in these. And they'll uh, go and, back for and supposedly they give you a little better food. Yeah. I really don't care that much about the food. I was more in concerned about how much leg room I had because I mean we are sitting on this flight for fifteen hours. So uh, it, it would well, be nice 20, to... 22 hours, actually. Yeah, actually. It, but even like if the seating wasn't as good from Van, from Toronto to Vancouver, that wouldn't have been a deal. No, no, that wouldn't because but that's only five that's hours. That's a five-hour flight. But I mean, the one where you're sitting on it constantly for 15 hours is pretty bad. And we've sat on it um, uh, three other times on in economy, regular economy. And you're pretty squeezed in. And sometimes we you don't... Uh, uh, the way we had the seats before, we'd always end up sitting next to a stranger or something like that, and, and that never really no. was all that great. And you never know what you get. And those ones, the ones you know, they, they 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 can sleep, but they're on top of you when they're sleeping, or they have to go to the bathroom every friggin' half hour on the half hour and trip over you and the whole bit. But anyways, we didn't have any of that, so that was very pleasant. No screaming children. That was good. So I did not have to open the window once and shove them out. Um, so that probably made things a little better too. Um, so we did try to sleep. Oh, as far as entertainment was concerned, okay, we had pull out monitors from the arms, armrests of our seats, um, as opposed to being on the back of the seat because we didn't have a seat. We didn't have a row of seats ahead of us. So. so, but the people behind us too, they had pull outs, didn't they? That whole section. They had pull outs for the tray tables, but the oh, they didn't for the, the monitor. monitors were in the back. Oh. And actually, they had a bigger monitor than we had. Oh, okay. But that doesn't really matter. No, they had a fairly wide selection of stuff. So I had taken. Except that we, we the, 
the entertainment nerds that we are, we we tended to watch all the new movies and yeah, all the new movies that were on in there were uh, ones we'd already seen. But they had other things too. They have podcasts on there. They had audio audio books as well. Um, they have music. I listened to some music, and that it wasn't. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. The only thing was, I had taken my iPad and wanted to take it on the plane because although I wouldn't have been able to use a, a Wi-Fi connection with it, you know, for streaming or anything, I mean, you could buy a You package. can get a Wi-Fi package, but I read somewhere that it's not fast enough for no. streaming. So I had loaded some movies and things that I thought I might want to watch and onto my iPad. Um, never used it. And in fact, that's the other thing. In this day and age of electronic devices, you'd think they would have built into planes now or retrofitted into planes, places to plug in your devices. Well, they did at the very base of the seat and- It was it, a regular plug. So yeah. you still have to have an adapter for your- And I did. Your uh, device to uh, be able to charge it properly. But really in this day and age, like people bring their laptops on and work and, and all that kind of stuff. You think they could do it. We made made them work. We, we were able to do it because I brought all kinds of different adapters and plugs with me and Walter had a pile too and we had those in our carry-on. So we were able to make it work and it was a good thing because my watch needed to be recharged and my phone and your phone and watch did too. Yeah. Because usually you're not... Like I charge my my phone and my watch every night when I go to bed, so it's ready. Yeah, the next so we're day. not usually we're not usually up for twenty two hours yeah. straight. So yeah, things wear down. So well, I it's more than twenty two hours because we had to leave uh, for the uh, the airport, and I mean oh, yeah, we got yeah. up we got up our normal times at home. So you know you put your watch on then, so it's working all the way from then till whenever you take the flight. Yeah. And, and we had a private car pick us up. It's a service. Um, Walter didn't like the car. I w well, it was a Cadillac, first of all, a big Cadillac. Uh, what do they call that one? The es Escalade. Escalade. And it had every. I had never seen so many video screens in a car in my life. There was one in the rear view mirror. There was one for navigation. There was one in front of the steering wheel. There was like... I was thinking, wow, uh, you could be very distracted in here driving, but it was kind of cool. Um, but the guy was really good. Uh, drove at 130 kilometers an hour on the 407. Well, time is money for him. So. Yeah, and boy, we got to the airport in no time. You could hear the sonic boom, boom, but not complaining about that. That was fine. Um, it was a breeze, sort of getting on through security. Yeah, and everything. Airline. No problems, you know. Like there was no lineup at security. No. Um, and um, their method to get your luggage on. Although was they did strange. do a little extra on me in the security. Oh, yeah, they didn't trust him. He didn't trust me. I mean, they, the guy says, Do you have any computers, laptops, you know, that kind of stuff? So got an iPad. We both did. And he says, I said, do you want me to pull it out of the case? And he says, yes, please. And I said, okay, fine. So pulled it out of the case, threw my jacket in, uh, took off our belts. Didn't have to take off your shoes. That was okay. Um, all of that stuff went through. Mine comes out the other end of the x-ray thing on a separate conveyor belt away from Walter's. So Walter gets his stuff and I get down to the end and there's this personality minus woman like the guys, okay, I'm sorry if this sounds sexist, but the guys were all very nice, very nice, very accommodating, even humorous. Not this bitch. No, no, no humor here. So I didn't say anything when she was looking at my stuff. I had a, I had a bag, a, a special bag that has all my electronics in it, all my cords, all my adapters, everything in there. Okay, so yeah, I suppose when it comes up on their computer screen, you know, there's all these wires or anything, is that a bomb? But they're really experienced. They know that people carry that stuff with them. So um, anyways, she opened them all up, went through them. One thing I'll say for her, she did manage to zip it all up for me and she didn't yank everything out and throw it all in that big plastic bin and left it there. But I don't know. 
Actually, the, the one thing that was a bit scary about going for security is that um, Steve had to take out his laptop and I had to take my laptop, top, or my laptop. Your my, iPad, right? My iPads, iPads out and um, put them in a bin and I put them in the same bin as my, his pad and my pad. Well, when they distracted you for having, looking at your case, yeah. right? He forgot about his iPad and I grabbed both of them when it came through. So somebody could have easily walked through and grabbed his iPad. And we've been hearing reports of that kind of thing happening. And it's actually with uh, the security people in some cases. Now, this is, we heard this out of the States, a couple of reports of that. Yeah, there's some, there was a couple of guys in Florida, TSAs in Florida. I mean, they're kind of stupid. They were on film. And, um, or they were being, uh, they were had a camera pointed at them. And they were caught rifling through people's bags they were coming down the security line and taking money out of people's wallets and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, just you, you've got to be looking over your shoulder and being aware of your surroundings all the time. And it's so easy to be distracted when you're going through those security lines or anything like that. But after saying all of this, it was pretty smooth. No problem. So, yeah, we got there fine. Went in, had some nachos and beers. Oh, the only thing that happened that was funny was... I accidentally reversed Steve's uh, uh, boarding pass. So I stapled them together. I stapled the, on mine, I stapled the Toronto one on top and the Vancouver one on the bottom. And Steve's, I accidentally put the Vancouver one on the top. So when he went to it through security, he went to scan it and the, it, got, it got rejected because it was the wrong one. You see, but it was fine. And he was really unhappy about it. I said, it, well, it's your fault you didn't read that one. Yeah, yeah, you see. Like, I expect it when someone uses a stapler and prints these things out that they put them in the right order. Well, I'll check that at I next time. I did on purpose. Yeah, you probably did because you, you had a little giggle. You're standing mm -hmm. Funny. Anyways, we got that sorted out. But you had a little panic there for a moment because I'm thinking... Oh, well, first of all... Well, I had them on my phone, too. Yeah, so. I know. But first of all, I didn't realize, I didn't think about it, that you had put two separate boarding passes together. I thought that you had pulled out the ones for Toronto to go to Vancouver. And then when we got to Vancouver, you would pull out the ones for Vancouver to Sydney. No, he stapled the two of them together, which is fine and dandy, but if they'd been in the right order. So that's why I never looked at them, and I should have. Yeah, he's right. It's my fault. I should have looked at it. It was my fault for allowing him to do what he did. Because he's an idiot. Okay. So, yeah. The flight was okay. I didn't sleep. You slept. I was afraid you were going to snore, but you were sitting sort of upright. So, I guess you, you know, it's usually when you're on flat in your back, you're snoring. Um, I kind of dozed in and dozed out. And, okay. I don't want comments about this because I know I shouldn't do this. I have a thing about the bathrooms on airplanes. I'm a claustrophobic. You know how big a bathroom is um, on, on an airplane. airplane. Also, I don't like the cattle crawl where, call, where you're all standing around at the back of the plane because they won't let you cut through into business class even though we were sitting like one row from business class. You can't use their washrooms because you're not special enough. You didn't pay the big bucks for that. So we were at the front of our section. We had to go all the way to the back and, you know, hobnob it with the plebes. Uh, and I just don't like standing there. And, and then, of course, you get into one of those things. And claustrophobic is, being claustrophobic is one thing. But then you get in there and someone just... Oh my God, have you been saving this up for a month just for it this occasion? It was fine when I went in. Yeah. So. Or somebody has decided, and when I say somebody, it's usually a, a woman, has decided, oops, women's poop doesn't smell, so I'll just spray a little perfume all over the place. And you walk in there and you get the wall of perfume and go, and you know, this isn't even good perfume. And actually... Even the expensive perfume, if you spray too much of it, smells cheap. So, you know, in my opinion, I know I'm sure I'm going to get hate mail on that one. Anyway, so I don't go. Now you're going to say, but it was 22. Well, we had to stop over in BC. In so, he, he went so I went there. to the bathroom there. And then back on the plane. And yeah, now 
I, I can be like a camel, but that's not a good thing because I think I did dehydrate. In fact, I'm pretty sure I got dehydrated. And not only that, but, and this is kind of not polite comedy, but I got a little bunged up, if you know what I mean, okay? You know, you have to get out the little wire brush uh, kind of a thing. But uh, that's all done. I guess I'm just going to have to get over being claustrophobic because I was a little uncomfortable. Um, my body kind of shuts down. It's not like I'm sitting there doing the pee pee dance or anything like that. It's just sort of like, I don't know. I've always done this. I've done this as a kid. Oh, well, he's every time we go flying somewhere, he always does that. Whereas I, I get up and go all the time. Because one thing I have full to, of shit. I mean, yeah. I have to uh, keep my legs going because I've had two DVTs before, so. And he had his sexy socks on for this trip. Yeah, so what I, call uh, sexy I, uh, socks. I like keeping socks. my legs going. Not only that, you get really stiff, stiff sitting in the seat for a long period of time. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, we got here this morning. And, After uh, we got in an hour earlier than they were supposed yeah. to. So, um, and the weather here right now is beautiful. It's like, was it 20? It's 20, it was 26 degrees uh, Celsius, which is, I'm not sure what that is. And uh, that's like 80 here. And right now, not a cloud and, in the sky. And not a cloud in the sky. And it's not that really humid heat. It was, uh, it's a nice heat. Yeah. So we're going to go, we have a balcony. We're on the 33rd floor of this hotel. It's a sort of a, a suite. Um, we have stayed here before, about six years ago. And at that time we had a little bigger one because they upgraded us to a two bedroom. Because these were actually apartments at one point in time or built to be apartments kind of a thing. So there's a full kitchen, like you can see part of it, but right behind me, full size fridge, washer dryer, and we purposely get that because we do use washer dryers and that way we don't have to pack as much stuff because Walter has found us hotels on our trip where we will have a washer dryer. So I think we're no more than how many days? Um, I think the longest stretch is maybe four days without a, without a washer. Without a washer dryer. So yeah, that cuts down on the amount of stuff we need to bring. Um, yeah, there's a yeah. lot of, in Australia, there's a lot of these efficiency type apartment or apartment type hotels, they call them. And uh, they have all the amenities of an apartment, including a washer and dryer. And uh, you, uh, it, it's a convenience feature. And I think the Australians really like that. Yeah. So I'll do a short. Uh, I can't flip things around on, I'm doing this on the iPad right now. I can't flip things around to show you the uh, place that we're staying in. So I'll do a short and post that at some and, point in time. And they're a reasonable rate. They're under usually around 200 or under 200 a night, so. And the advantage too is our Canadian dollar is stronger than the Aussie dollar, not by a whole lot, about 15%. So anything we buy, so we get a sale. Yeah, we well actually the Aussie dollar against the American dollar is quite lucrative as well. So like, I mean, yeah, you're so, saying, if you're paying two, uh, if you're paying two hundred dollars for something in an Aussie dollar, you're actually paying about a. Uh, if you're paying two hundred dollars for a unit like this, then with a uh, in an Aussie dollar, you're, with an American dollar, you're paying about one fifty for one of these. And we're paying about what one seventy five. Yeah, for it. So yeah, so everything is like a little bonus. You get a little discount on everything. It seems. Um, but anyways, so we. Got through the airport and everything. It was fairly efficient. Didn't speak to a customs agent at all. It was all done electronically. They do the same thing in Toronto airport where you basically go up to a kiosk. And I'm sure there's American airports do this now because it's a thing, right? Uh, you put your passport into that. It asks you a few questions. You click through, usually you say no to everything because they're usually that's the way it is. And it p prints out a little, oh, well, it, it looks at your face. It takes a picture of your face as well and uh, prints this little white ticket out with your face on it and some other codes or whatever. And then you go through another security gate kind of a thing. You show it to who's standing there and they say, okay, then bye bye. You know, kind of a thing. We didn't get pulled. Yeah, you go to a, it's a turnstile, just like you're yeah. going to 
into a subway or something like that, into a, a train station or something, you go through a turnstile and you show this ticket, which has your face on it, and uh, it, uh, it reads it and it gives you a green light or a red light. Yeah. And if you get a red light, you gotta stop go see and go a see a, a real person. If you get a green light, then they let you through. They just go through. And as soon as we got down to the carriage carousel, our bags were right there. Bang. Didn't have to wait for it. Well, we were a little bit delayed picking up our bags. Well, because not really delayed. We were really fast, actually, getting through the security thing. Um, but I did have to make a stop at the washroom. <laughs> you know, had to sort of empty out. Uh, so to speak, but I wasn't there for that long because, well, we don't need to go into bathroom talk. Um, but anyway, so we got out, so we went outside and we were taking a taxi. And yeah, this was expensive because it was it about was... six o'clock in the morning. I think our laundry is done. Yeah. Um, it was about six o'clock, a little after six o'clock in the morning. And guess what we hit? We hit Sydney's downtown um, uh, rush hour. Rush hour traffic. And the, and guy, the guy, said guy already to us, said to us, this is going to take a while because it's rush hour and it's, it's actually probably, we should have waited at the airport an hour. Yeah, maybe. Bit, because, and it was bad. I mean, he asked us if in Toronto we had this thing. So, oh yeah. And it was, it was really, there's an area here where it was like literally stopped. We were probably stopped for a good 20 minutes yeah. in one spot. So, yeah. And that cost us about... Well, in uh, Aussie dollars, it was almost 200 bucks from the airport. In uh, with, But with our 15% discount being Canadian dollars, it was only 160, oh no, 190, 191. Well, we had a little problem because my card got declined and it looked like it got approved. Well, what happened was he tapped it and uh, we're in a foreign country and the first thing you did was tap it mm -hmm. and so, uh, it probably went through the credit card company and said, oh, there's this charge from Australia for 100 <laughs> But the guy came into the hotel and said that the card got declined. I said, ooh, sorry about that. I said, well, let's give it another try. Now, he had the bill that is printed out by the machine, right? And it said, declined. Uh, so it shouldn't have gone through as a charge. So we did it again. And I said, well, let me use, press in the, the my passcode instead because you know i don't know sometimes with tap uh when we just touch it you can have a problem and that went through okay but then i was looking at my accounts uh online uh from today and everything is thought oh we've got two charges for that taxi company so i phoned the taxi company and they said no our records show that that first charge and she had all the information and gave it to me and it was all correspondent with what I had and she says that was declined so I don't know if there's a time delay I'll wait a little bit I mean I'll I'll dispute it with MasterCard uh, when we get home if it doesn't disappear from the card and of course then six months later who knows but whatever so that was a little bit of a well, also you have the receipt that says declined, oh yeah so oh yeah so I mean that would be something that when you dispute it with MasterCard. But this goes back to what we were saying about people, you know, fraud, uh, you know. Yeah, you don't know if you're getting scammed doing, or scammed something. Doing that, you know. He seemed like a nice young man, and it was a company. He wasn't working on his own. This was, he was working for a company. He had all the license things and everything there uh, with it, so legit. And... There was definitely then a time delay because it didn't instantly say. But see, like I had at one time when I purchased something like at an um, um, uh, electronics store, right? And it was, uh, and then I, I returned it right away and I had a double charge. I didn't, I had a double charge on my account. Like I still had the original charge on my account and they didn't give me the refund yet type of thing. And then it was on pending. And uh, it took two or three days for it. To so we're just not going to panic about that. I mean, it's an annoyance. It's not the end of the world, but uh, either way. But, you know, it's still, this is kind of a substantial amount of money, too, for nothing. Uh, but uh, that by kangaroo feet. Um, when we get to them. 
But anyways, uh, so we got checked into this hotel and Rory talked about that. Yeah, and actually it was good because we got here really early and all, their check-in time was at 2 o'clock. But they allow, uh, they gave us room right away. So. Well, we were here at 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. So, yeah, they gave us room right away. But this place is dated. And I mean that in, I have a thing about my electronics. I want outlets. I want things that I can plug in readily to get, because everything needs to be charged, right? And I've got my watch, my phone, my iPad. Walter has his watch, his phone, his iPad. You know, this place has no available outlets. Actually, they have an outlet in a spot right in the middle of the room. A wall. Well, there's no, nothing there. There's no, <laughs> like, counter, nothing, or table or whatever. Walter has a chair pushed up against it now. The other thing, too, which we already knew, planned for, is, of course, the outlets here are different, and they're on a different current. We're on 110 in North America. They're on 220. And I have a conversion kit, but just realized I've had that conversion kit for probably 40 years, uh, so I had bought a new little device that I was looking forward to using because it was like an, a kind of an extension block that you plug in and you've got like four USB plugins for it. You've got a power outlet and there are some, you know, USBs in there too. I bought this from Amazon. I thought this would be great because I can have all my devices plugged into this one thing on like the night side table, bedside table, and that is going to really work. Yeah, the plug on the end of it, I didn't think about it on the block itself, is one of those ones, that, it's a three pronger. Guess what my old conversion kit is? It doesn't handle, the, the piece you plug in for the North American plugs doesn't handle a three pronger, it's only a two pronger. That's how old it is. Not only that, but the com there's a conversion thing that steps down the 220 to 110 for your devices. Now, most modern devices now can use either one, um, but not all of them. Well, actually, no, our iPhones can't, can they? Yeah, all our iPhones Yeah, all, anything Apple. Uh, can that's what all can, but all of ours are Apple. Yeah, so that's really not a problem. But the problem is there is no outlets in here that don't have something in them. You would have to unplug a lot of other stuff. I have it rigged up. Right, we're we're doing it. But I went. Oh, I thought I had this all worked out. So that was a bit of a disappointment. And the other thing is, I'm as tired as hell. Okay, I've perked up a little bit because Walter made me go for a long walk. I just wanted to like lay down and go to sleep. But oh, can't. I said we well, should take advantage of this nice weather. And, and then he made here. me walk up hills. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, well, you're old. You're really old. You need to walk more. You need to be just sitting around and quilting all day. Kettle calling the pot black because that's he does is sit in front of a computer all day. All day. I have no... For a walk. Okay, I think uh, in the last month you went out one day for a walk. Twice. You said, I'm going out for a walk. Oh, and I just thought, yeah, really? Enjoy. I'm doing a quilt. Uh, but, you know, anyways. Yes, we should get more exercise. Um, I thought this was supposed to be short. Well, it's not. So sue me, go away. There's lots to tell and people want to hear it. Yeah, so tomorrow we're meeting your nephew. Yeah, okay, so anyways, we got SIM cards for our phone and they seem to be operating okay. And we've made arrangements with my nephew to meet him for drinks before dinner and then off for dinner. And in fact, we even walked down into the area because it's about a 15 minute walk, he told us. From our hotel, I think we're gonna need to leave a little bit yeah. earlier now. Yeah. And maybe like, it's a fifteen. We have to walk uphill, thirty, then downhill, then uphill again. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, and we're not yeah. talking little hills. No, no, no. no. They're not just small little bumps. No, they're big. Um, so yeah, we've got that all worked out. So um, I don't know what we're doing tomorrow. There's actually lots of museums here in Sydney. And I'm not absolutely sure 
if all the museums are free or part of them are free or whatever. I think some of the displays you have to pay for, but a, a lot displays. of their uh, public displays are free. And so it's kind of nice to, it was the last time we were here. I don't know if that's yeah. changed. So. so I think we should take in some of those because yeah. we didn't really, last time we were here, we didn't really do a whole lot of museums. Um, and there looks like there's some really, like Bans, Bank, Banksy has a show, show on here in one, you know, he's the street artist. It's in, in London. In London. In London, England. We saw that there's a show here, and then there's something else in the Australian Museum that's here. They call it the Australian Museum, which we're not really sure what it is. And I noticed that there was something about photography in the wars mm -hmm. or something in the library mm -hmm. or whatever. Of course, we went to that library to see a special display the last time we were here, and that was a lot down. That was pretty sad, actually. But anyways, there's lots of things to see that we haven't seen before. So we'll Yeah, we're that. not going to do anything too radical to no. this uh, first couple of days. We're just getting used to the time change and stuff like that because uh, on Thursday we collect our um, our uh, rental car and then uh, on the Friday on the Friday, on Good Friday and then on Friday we head off to Newcastle. So yeah, which is how far is Newcastle? A couple hours. It's a couple hour drive, but it's I'd like to coast. stop maybe a couple of places yeah, we'll, too. We'll so. do that. So anyways, I feel a little frazzled. Um, because it's a lot of, of traveling time today, or the last couple of days, basically. Um, so, yeah, I know I'm going to sleep tonight. There are no two ways about it. But can't go to bed too early, because if you do, you'll wake up at like 2 o'clock in the morning, and then you're wide awake uh, for it, because that's what these kind of things do to you. And I'm sure many of you have experienced jet lag and the whole bet. So we're trying to minimize the jet lag. Okay. Anything else we need to tell people? No, not yet. I don't know. We're drinking. What kind of beer are we drinking? We're drinking. Smitties? I bought the cheap stuff. Oh, cheap we're, stuff. We're, we're drinking Smitty's. It's probably the Australians would probably cringe. Yeah, probably. Because they saw that because it was cheaper than the other yeah. ones. But that's just the way we roll. Okay, everybody. Thought we would check in with you. There'll be more coming up in shorts and everything. And, and we'll see where it goes from there. You never know. Every day is a new day. I think that's what the quilt show uses at the end of that. Remember, every day is a new day. But uh, anyways, that might be copyrighted. Okay, hope everybody is having a good time. Actually, at the time that we're recording this, you are probably in bed. It's probably the very wee hours of the of yesterday. Oh God, time travel. Okay, bye.